And now we're going to have some fun. I'm going to demonstrate two hollow figures for you. I'm going to make this lovely dog. It's made with a magnetic mould, so we're actually going to decorate two halves and then place them all together. So the whole dog will come out as one complete piece. And then we're going to be looking at making two hollow shells and those will be made individually, so we'll need to stick them together. We obviously need um, tempered pre-crystallised chocolates. So I've got two available here at the moment, the white and the dark. And then a few very, very simple tools, just a Calabat scraper, some um, pastry brushes, piping bags, and a pair of scissors. What we need for making hollow figures is a great mould design, of course. I prefer to use polycarbonate moulds, as they give a very high gloss to the chocolate, and they're very easy to clean. I like to use transparent moulds as they allow me to check how the chocolate is cooling and setting. For this Dalmatian, I'm using magnetic moulds that automatically clip together. The great thing about them is you can do the moulding in one go without having to assemble two chocolate halves together afterwards. The first thing I'm going to do is to make sure my mould halves are completely dry, squeaky clean and free from any fingerprints. The least bit of chocolate residue will always show on the finished product and water drops or condensation left in the mould will give us dull stains on the final chocolate figure and may even cause sugar bloom. Now, always avoid touching the inside of the mould with your bare fingers. Fingerprints on the mould will show in the chocolate, run after run, so make sure they're really clean. And now it's time for the fun part. Warm the mould halves first with a heat gun their temperature should be around 2 to 4 degrees centigrade lower than the temperature of the chocolate. If not, the chocolate would cool too fast, which would cause my chocolate figure to show cooling spots or even a grey colour. The next thing I'm going to do is fill in the details of my mould with a small paper cornet filled with pre-crystallised chocolate. Pre-crystallised because otherwise the chocolate would remain soft and wouldn't even come out of the mould. If your mould happens to contain a lot of fine details, I always use a four drop or five drop chocolate to fill them in because it has the perfect fluidity to really fill in those little nuts and crannies. You can also create special highlights by applying a sort of finger painted technique or by brushing in the chocolate. Now I always leave the chocolate to harden for a few minutes at ambient temperature before adding the next colour on top. This keeps the chocolates from blending and when all details are filled in and harden, it's time to do the actual moulding. First, I scrape off all excess chocolate so the two mould halves perfectly fit together without any space between them, otherwise the chocolate might leak out while filling the mould. Then, I keep the mould at an angle and fill it with pre-crystallised chocolate until it is two-thirds full. Next, start swirling the chocolate around in the mould and when the walls of the mould are richly covered, pour the excess chocolate back into the melter. The idea is to create a smooth layer of chocolate that covers all sides of the mould evenly. Then, I scrape off the excess chocolate from the bottom. It's important to do that while the chocolate is still wet. If the chocolate has set too much, you'd risk breaking the edges of the hollow figure. And then I leave my hollow figure to harden in the refrigerator between 14 and 16 degrees centigrade for about 30 minutes or even more for larger hollow figures. Placing the mould in the fridge on its side prevents the heat from remaining trapped inside the mould. Otherwise the chocolate will cool too slowly and turn greyish, so always make sure you use a refrigerator with good air ventilation. We're now 30 minutes later. It's time to check if the chocolate's contracted from the mould. The great thing with transparent moulds is they're so easy to check. You can literally see through them whether the chocolate's contracted enough to demould. The lighter parts show as the chocolate has contracted. Dark spots indicate the chocolate is still wet. In that case, it needs further cooling. The chocolate should be evenly contracted before attempting to demould. Always check the thickness of the chocolate shell if it's too thin, the shell might break during demoulding. In that case, it's best to apply a second layer of chocolate and leave it to cool again. Now, this one looks perfect. So now, I'm going to demould my hollow figure. 
Always make sure the worktop is really clean because the chocolate will be static on demoulding and attract every little chocolate crumb or particle and that would spoil our finished product. Remember to wear gloves when you do any demoulding so not to mark the end product. There you go, a delicious chocolate Dalmatian to sink your teeth into.